anesthetic considerations in hypertension welcome to this topic my name is dr janvi and i've done my md along with a fellowship in neuro and regional <coughs> anesthesiology so this topic is something that i think you all will be able to teach me better than i can because we see this all the time patients come to pre op opd they have high blood pressures patient come to ot they have uncontrolled high blood pressure intra op high blood pressure post op high blood pressure so all of us keep trying to manage this high bp high bp but you know what i'll tell you from my personal experience now when i was a resident we were taught that you have to first find out the underlying cause for that high bp you should not just give antihypertensives to the patient but you should find out is it because of the uncontrolled systemic disease is it because he is anxious is it because of pain shivering what is the cause of the high bp okay and we used to treat it accordingly and what i learned during my formative years was you know basically just increase the depth of anesthesia give propofol bolus increase volatile anesthetic agent for managing high blood pressure cut to leaving residency joining newer places from there from different anesthesiologists i learned okay there if nothing is working out if you're not able to find out the cause or if it is systemic hypertension that is the underlying cause then in ca that case we have other drugs to give so there i started using ntg sodium nitroprusside esmolol metoprolol labetalol all these drugs okay so trust me for the first 3 to 4 years of anesthesia i had not even used these drugs but over a period of time i learned how to use them in which cases is it actually that my patient has inadequate depth of anesthesia and in which cases is nothing working out and i need to start beta blockers so along with how you evolve during your journey of anesthesia you learn how to use a lot of drugs but at the end of the day what you learn basic during my residency like i learned was find the cause find the cause and treat it it is not the reason uh, i mean you do have drugs which will immediately take care of the situation but at the end of the day you will be a better anesthetist if you use a little bit of the mental capacity that you have and try to find the cause of it okay so the commonest cause of case cancellation in pre anesthetic clinic or even just right before the ot is a if the patient has high blood pressure and b if the patient has abnormal potassium levels especially hypokalemia patients often have hypokalemia okay so you all must have also cancelled a lot of cases and i remember uh, in our um, institute the last induction time used to be 4:30 and 4:15 they used to get this patient who was not very optimized and they used to say chalo now induce this patient and uh, we used to say but the patient's blood pressure is high i cannot induce patient at this high blood pressure of 180 by 100 so they used to say no no anesthetist is cancelling case because uh, it is four, almost 4:30 now so they don't want to take a new case so at that time i used to feel like okay we are cancelling case aisa to nahi hai i can give propofol and the bp will come down but that was not the case over a period of time i remember i realized that often when your list is getting over the surgeons will go and get cases that you know they saw just yesterday or day before yesterday and were not very optimized so it is a actual mix of many factors from the surgical side patient side as well as anesthetic side that leads to a case cancellation what is the incidence of perioperative hypertension so if you see at least 10% of the patients coming to the opd in pre anesthesia clinic uh, end up having a high blood pressure so you will do your pac clinic your nurse will come and she'll check the blood pressure and she'll say it is very high the bp is very high you check it a couple of times it tends to remain high so the trend is high so in males you see this happening more often as compared to females and it is seen that out of these 10% patients okay suppose Uh, i saw 100 patients in the opd today and out of them 10 patients had high blood pressure now when i take these 10 patients in the ot and if i have not optimized any of them it is seen that at least 5 of them will have intraop hypertension now why am i doing this maths with you i mean to say eventually that 50% of the patients that you don't treat or don't optimize prior to surgery will end up having intraop hypertension 
Why am I scared about intraop hypertension? It can put a strain on my heart. It can cause cardiovascular abnormalities, ischemic heart disease. It can affect my brain. It can cause cerebral hemorrhage. It can cause stroke. It can affect my kidneys. It can cause hypertensive nephropathy. It can lead to proteinuria, kidney damage. Intraop, it can lead to excessive bleeding and I might have to transfuse the patient and the surgeon is going to give me one full on uh, shouting okay ki patient's bp is so high and i'll be struggling so much as an anesthetist because i want that my patient has an optimized hemodynamics but the blood pressure won't come down so why do you fall into that situation when you have the option right over here in the pre anesthesia evaluation opd to send the patient to the physician start them on antihypertensives and get them optimized prior to surgery okay so let's have a look at what do you define hypertension as. So when we were talking about diabetes, we saw how diabetes is defined. How do you define uh, gestational diabetes? How do you define all your different types, you know, like um, poor glycemic control. So impaired glucose tolerance. Okay. So here we will define hypertension as per JNC8 criteria. So JNC8 criteria says that normal blood pressure systolic is less than 120 diastolic is less than 80 okay in case of pre hypertension systolic pressure is between 120 to 139 and diastolic pressure is between 80 to 89 so this patient is pre hypertensive okay now when do i start defining them as hypertension i start defining them as hypertension when the blood pressure crosses 140 90 okay so that means stage 1 hypertension is when the patient's blood pressure is 140 to 159 and diastolic is between 90 to 99. Stage 2 hypertension, patient's BP is 160 by 100, more than that. And there is also another stage, stage 3 hypertension, in which patient's BP is more than or equal to 180 systolic and more than or equal to 110 diastolic. Okay, so this is the JNC8 criteria. What do I need to remember from your stage 1 hypertension more than 140, 90? That is the most basic thing that I need to remember. If I can't remember any of the other stages, it's fine. But this has to be remembered. What is primary hypertension? What is secondary hypertension? Okay. So, primary hypertension means as a result of the changes that are happening in the body along with old age, you have arteriosclerosis, you end up developing systemic hypertension. Okay, so the problem is in the blood vessels itself. Secondary hypertension means there is some organ dysfunction leading to blood pressure as an add on with it. Okay, so for example, if my patient has chronic kidney disease, or if my patient has any endocrinological disease, for example, if he has uh, pheochromocytoma or if he has thyrotoxicosis, okay, so all these conditions will lead to high blood pressure. If my patient has IHD, secondary to it, he starts developing hypertension because of poor heart function, increased afterload, okay, so all these are my causes of secondary hypertension. So for secondary hypertension, there is an underlying organic cause. Second is vasoconstricted and hyperdynamic hypertension. Okay, so what is vasoconstricted? What is hyperdynamic? So in vasoconstricted hypertension, my systolic blood pressure will remain normal. My diastolic blood pressure will be on the higher side. In hyperdynamic, my systolic blood pressure will be high, but my diastolic blood pressure will be normal. Okay. Now, when does this happen? So, vasoconstricted hypertension is basically in any case where I have vascular changes, I have arteriosclerosis and as a result of the arteriosclerosis, the blood vessels that are there, they have increased resistance and increased diastolic blood pressure. On the other hand, in hyperdynamic state, in hyperdynamic hypertension, my body is in a hyperdynamic state. Especially during surgery, if you see, during surgery, you have increased heart rate, you have increased cardiac output. That whole thing leads to increase in blood pressure. So, this is a hyperdynamic circulation. So, this hyperdynamic circulation that I have leads to a rise in the systolic blood pressure. Okay. So, simple 
वेजो कंस्ट्रक्टेड हाइपर टेंशन डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर इज हाई हाइपर डायनामिक हाइपर टेंशन माई सिस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर इज हाई 